Hey guys, what's going on? Steggy here with a video review of the Samson Go mic. So I've been noticing lately that a lot of competitive gamers have gravitated towards streaming gameplay and doing gameplay commentaries, no doubt thanks to some sites such as Justin TV and Machinima.com. With this in mind, I decided to take a look at some microphones to review for those who are looking to break into this, because nothing can kill a video like bad audio, and nothing can benefit a video like great audio. So enter the Samson Go mic. Priced at a budget-friendly $50, the Samson Go mic is advertised as the solution for your podcasting and field recording needs. I tested this mic out for the past few weeks to see how it would handle a wide range of uses a competitive gamer might find for it. So how did the Go mic fare? Well, let's start first with what's in the box. I'm sure all of you guys saw my unboxing of the Samson Go mic, but here's a refresher anyways. With the Go mic, you get mounting hardware for attaching the microphone to a stand or a boom, you get the mic itself, a mini USB to USB cord, and a carrying case. Everything you need to set up a nice little studio for audio dubbing. The Samson Go mic is very travel friendly and will be protected by the ballistic nylon-esque carrying case. One thing to keep in mind though is that the case only fits the mic itself and not the hardware or the USB cable. Let's jump into the design now. The Samson Go mic definitely caught my eye with its design when looking at different selections online. It has a very vintage look to it, and it reminded me of those microphones you'd see in 1970s newscasts. On the microphone, you will find a mini USB port to connect to your computer and to power the mic, a 3.5mm jack, a switch for the different microphone settings, and the ball joint which connects the Go mic to the stand slash clip. Getting into the 3.5mm jack first, the Samson Go mic features zero latency audio monitoring through a 3.5mm headphone jack. This feature seems mostly to be reserved for higher end microphones like the Blue Yeti or some of the Audio Technica microphones, but you get it with the Go mic, which is great for seeing how positioning and distance directly affects the tone you get while you're recording. Considering the Go mic's size though, I wouldn't suggest plugging in more than a set of earbuds as the weight from a heftier set of headphones will tip your microphone over. Moving on to the switch, the Go mic features three different settings for your audio recording needs, omnidirectional, cardioid, and negative 10 dB. Omnidirectional will give you 360 degrees of audio from the microphone. If you plan on having multiple people speak into the microphone, this is the setting you're going to want it on. Cardioid is a setting where the microphone is capturing just what's in front of it. It's sort of like a shotgun mic. The negative 10 dB option lowers the gain on the microphone to eliminate ambient noise. This is the setting where your mouth will be right up against the microphone when speaking, but more on that later in the sound section. The Samson Go mic comes attached to a heavy duty metal laptop clip slash stand. I have mixed thoughts about this though. The clip allows you to hook your Go mic on top of your laptop, but if you're using a desktop with a monitor, you won't be able to clip this on. Instead, you can either use a mic boom or stand where the Go mic comes with the mounting hardware for that, or you can have the clip rest on a flat surface and use it as its own stand. I thought this was a cool feature, however in practice I sort of thought otherwise. So I found that the clip had enough counterweight for the microphone to freestand, but the microphone would sort of move. Uh, the microphone is really light, the clip is pretty heavy, but I found that when I was using it with my desktop, the weight of the mini USB cable would sort of drag the microphone down a bit, which would cause it to move. This problem doesn't really occur when clipped to a laptop, so if you're going to be using it for that, it shouldn't be a problem at all. Getting into sound now, as I said before, there are three different settings you can use. Omnidirectional, cardioid, and negative 10 dB. To be frank about it, I was really impressed with what I used it for. But the best way to get a gauge of the three settings is hearing it, and that's what this video review is for. I'm going to start this off with a negative 10 dB setting, because that's what I've been using to record this video so far with it. It is my favorite setting, uh, and this is what you're going to want to use when you're going to want to do a dub of something like game commentaries. Because of the lowered sensitivity to sound, you have to go right up to the microphone to feed it audio. I'm about 6 inches away from it. What this does is it eliminates ambient noise and the reflections from your voice to alleviate anything, you know, humming in the background or having an echoey kind of voice. The other settings work great, but with this setting, someone might mistake you for using a professional condenser microphone. However, the major drawback of this setting is the requirement of a pop filter. This is what I'm using right now for the video review. Without a pop filter, you'll have the plosive sound coming from your B's or P's, which isn't fun. But with it, the sound you get is great. So this is me saying boy, B as in boy, and P as in poly, with a pop filter on. So now if I take the pop filter off and say the same things, B as in boy, and P as in poly, you can notice that it, you have a plosive sound from those consonants. So using a pop filter brings two drawbacks. One is it requires you to spend more money. I spent $20 on my pop filter at my local guitar center, though you can find a better deal on Amazon.com. 
And two, having a pop filter seriously dilutes the whole portability factor, because if you haven't noticed, pop filters are friggin' huge. Blue makes a little bit more of a portable pop filter, but it's almost as much money as the Go mic itself. Another problem I ran into personally with my setup is that I don't have a mic stand or any kind of boom. I use my Astro Gaming headset stand to prop my mic up, and I balance my pop filter on my desk to get it in front of the microphone. The setup worked, but it's clunky. And if you're going to use the negative 10 dB setting, you do need to get up close with the microphone to have it pick up your voice. So prepare to lean forward or come up with a MacGyver setup like I did. Anyways, if using this setting is crucial to you, I would suggest springing for a 4 inch pop filter as it would be a bit more portable than the 6 inch that I have. I personally think that one could get away with just using the other two settings when they're out on the road and then leave the negative 10 dB with a pop filter for home use. Alright, so let's switch to the cardioid setting. Get it? Alright, so now I'm moving the pop filter out of the way and I'm leaning further back from the microphone. Cardioid will probably be the most widely used setting that you have the Samsung Go mic on. With this setting, you can hook your Go mic onto your laptop, have it shot straight at you, and start talking. I used this setting for Skype calls and recordings with my webcam and it worked out really nice. When connected to a laptop, you're at about the perfect distance where your voice will have a full sound without having pee popping. And with my desktop, I'm just using the Astro headset stand still, but I'm able to lean further back. With either setup, you're going to want to fiddle with your mic gain settings though to get the right responsiveness of the microphone. I also would like to mention that with the nature of cardioid in general though, be wary that the noises you make in the line of fire between the microphone and you, and sometimes behind you, can be picked up by the microphone. That's why for straight audio recordings, I normally choose the negative 10 dB. If you were just wondering what that noise was, it was the creaking from my chair that's also in front of the microphone. So like I said, keep in mind it can catch what's in its line of fire. Alright, so now onto the final setting, omnidirectional. This setting worked as advertised. With this setting, I worried less about the distance between myself and the microphone, but keep in mind with the whole line of fire thing with the cardioid setting, the same goes for the omnidirectional, but in 360 degrees. So if you're doing an interview with somebody out in the field and have the omnidirectional on, you're going to want to try to keep your area clear from friends or bystanders who are ready to throw a that's what she said during your interview because the mic could possibly pick that up. What you also want to keep in mind is that if you're in your bedroom or office, when using the omnidirectional setting, the microphone doesn't just pick up the ambient noise like my desktop fan or my Xbox 360 fan, but it'll also pick up the reflections from your voice that's bouncing off the walls when you speak. The sound waves travel and bounce off the walls and whatnot and will go into the microphone which causes an echoey kind of sound. It's the setting I personally use the least out of the three, but I definitely wouldn't want to be caught without it. Getting into the sound quality critique of the mic, with the Samsung Go mic, what I noticed in all of the settings was a surprising amount of clarity for the size and the price of the product. But the one criticism I can say about the sound is that the microphone doesn't really pick up the low end of my voice in recording. If you reference back to my video reviews on my YouTube channel, you can tell the differences in sound signature, but you'll also be able to hear the difference in clarity as well, which the Samsung Go mic excels over the rest of my videos in. Overall, this microphone worked really well for Skype, webcam recording, gameplay commentating, and review dubbing. It's a great multi-purpose microphone that will travel easily and fits many gamers' budgets with a price of $50, which is less than most video games nowadays. It's really best designed to be used with a laptop, but I was able to get by using it with my desktop with just a little bit extra setup work. But if you're looking to start doing some gaming commentaries, or just looking to up your voice quality when you're talking to your friends on Skype, I would not hesitate in recommending the Samsung Go mic for your audio needs. So that'll do it for my video review of the Samsung Go mic. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please comment, like it, and subscribe to my channel. And if you really liked this video, hit the favorite button down below, as it really does help me out. So once again, this is Steggy, and until my next video, I will catch you guys later.